Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Kalahari Middle School event, checking with 88380D, Robohawks, Am I Right? Phenomenal season so far, tournament champion, and an excellent award at a previous events. So congratulations so far, and looking to do big things here at the middle school event here at Kalahari. We're gonna be diving into 8838D here on Pitts and Parks, learning all about their full composition. One of the things that I really am interested to talk about is their sub some positioning uh, during the season and evolving throughout the season as well, too. Uh, talk about, of course, their wings, their catapult, their intake, so much more. Let's learn about the scene coming up here on Pitts and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Nathan, one of the things uh, on your robot that we want to start with is the uh, hanging ratchet that you're doing. I just watched your last match. you got a great climber so far. Just talk to me about what's gone into it uh, and any iterations throughout the season as well. Yeah, so one thing we're really proud of, proud of on our robot is our hanging mechanism and especially the ratchet on the hanging mechanism. Uh, uh, our hanging design has changed throughout the entire season. We first started with uh, a similar design but we um, made our ratchet a little bit uh, uh, more compact and smaller so that the bar could fit and um, we could hang higher and tighter. Um, we have um, multiple gears and sprockets on our hanging mechanism and we have a ratchet that uh, we use so when we hang, uh, we can still hang after our robots have been disabled and that it won't slip off after uh, the or driver period. Can we deploy yeah. that and take a look at what that looks like? Yeah. So our hang can go up and down. It can also activate with uh, pneumatics, which is powered by uh, compressed air. And then um, it ratchets on, and we can use it. And looking throughout the season, I really like that ratcheting because you're going pure mechanical, right? You're going to have a lot of slip if you go that way for that. Uh, what made you think about wanting to go with the ratcheting system? Did you do that through trial and error? Yeah, so uh, we, ha we had a different uh, variation of our ratchet on our first hanging mechanism. But we decided that we had to make this uh, more like uh, that it could uh, fit with our, our subsystem right now because our hang was um, quite different back then. And so we uh, made this uh, ratchet on an axle so that it can move freely uh, instead of being in one place. So our pneumatics would just push up the standoffs that would connect with our sprockets and then it couldn't slip after it's been uh, locked onto the ratchet. Let's speak about subsystems. Let's talk about subsystem positioning. Ion's going to cover more about that. Uh, so you put a lot of thought into where you're putting your subsystems. Walk me through uh, some of that thought process. So basically, we realized that we needed to make a robot for, robot perform all of the necessary tasks to play the game, and we wanted to maximize our efficiency by being able to complete all, as many tasks as possible. So first, we noticed that we had to make our subsystems compact in order to fit as many as possible. Therefore, we put our hang almost in like the back, the front middle of our robot, and the catapult in the back middle, as well as the intake in the very front, so we could balance three subsystems on the top of a robot and make them efficient. I love the thought process that's gone into that, Jonathan. Uh, let's talk about another subsystem, your catapult for it. Talking about uh, how your catapult functions, we'll see it fire off a couple times as well, and uh, interesting putting it kind of all the way in the back as well too. Talk to me more about that. Yeah. So the reason why we put it in the back is because the catapult is actually our one, is our heaviest part of our. Bought. So we put our hang and our intake to counterbalance that so that the center of our center of mass would be directly in the middle with all of these other components like our battery and our uh, pneumatic tank. So our sapper went through many, many variations and at first when the intake intake the, the tri ball it would load into the catapult and then it would fire. But then we realized that this was a bad strategy because intaking and shooting the cata takes way too much time and cata catapult should only be used for match loading. So that's why we changed our catapult to a slapper that only match loads. And for our catapult, we also used a, a metal gear and we slipped the metal gear for our gear ratio because metal gears are much more, more stable and reliable. And we also added our ratchet on the inside of the catapult so that when the catapult goes down, it'll stay down or like it won't go back up in the middle of our cycles. Can we see that fire off a couple times too? Yeah, sure. 
How quickly are you actually doing match loads? Like, how, how quick can you get through a full set? So we can get through a first set of, t of 22 try balls in around 10 to 15 seconds. Let's keep moving on. You mentioned uh, the intake and some of that integration. So, Louis, talk to me about your uh, intake and, and what you're doing for that. Um, you know, you talked about that transfer process isn't quite there anymore. So did you make any other changes to your intake as well? Uh, yes, we did. Originally, our intake was um, also at one point connected to our hang right here. So, like, both of them were like one big mega sub system, but we decided to drop this idea due to weight issues as well as just com compatibility and sizing. Um, we've also added these little, like, antennae onto our intake, and that allows us to touch the um, high bar during a, like, autonomous round, sure. and that'll get us a win point. Well, very cool thought for that. Let's wrap up on this. Talk about your wings that go into it. Tane's going to be talking more about that. Uh, Wings-wise on it, you know, I, I have to a middle school team, so there's a little bit less than I expected for that, but I'm glad you guys are doing uh, wings on it. Let's deploy those out and talk to me more about it. Uh, our pneumatic powered wings help us plow tri balls across the field without breaking any rules or violation. As you can see here, uh, one wing is bigger than the other, which we use this wing for descoring for autonomous or just in matches where we need to descore. Well, RoboHawks, am I right? Thank you so much for taking time to tell us about your team. Congrats on a great season so far. I know looking for big things here at Kalahari, so we can't wait to see how you do. Good luck the rest of the way. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.